Um, hello, everybody. This, um, in this session, we'll discuss the complexity of agreement. So agreement is a problem which is tackled by many communities in social choice theory, distributed computing, theoretical computer science, and, and in this, in this, in this uh, case, it's, it's a theoretical computer science approach on, on Bayesian agreement. So, it's, um, so we'll base the discussion on a paper published in the Symposium of the Theory of Computing um, um, in 2005 by Scott Aronson called The Complexity of Agreement. And it tackles the question of um, two Bayesian agents um, uh, trying to agree, and, and then uh, you can compute uh, how many bits of information they could share and, 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 and also um, uh, to, to, to reach an agreement and other problems of complexity uh, theory in terms of either uh, communication or, 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 or time. Uh, maybe Le, you want to tell us more about the paper? Yeah, so the basic uh, idea is that uh, the two Bayesians uh, initially have the same prior. So maybe uh, they are born with the same prior. And uh, then they collect very different data. Like you can imagine that one Bayesian is going to live uh, his life uh, in one way, like the other Bayesian is going to live her life in a very different way. So they collect very different data. And because of this, they have different uh, posterior. Like, so if uh, you ask them, for instance, uh, what is uh, the probability that uh, uh, France will win the next World Cup, then maybe they will disagree because they have access to different uh, data. Uh, so they said different probabilities, like maybe one is going to say 10% uh, and the other is going to say 50%. Uh, uh, so maybe just, just, sorry, just so that people who are not familiar with Bayesian language follow with us, like some ways it's coming from uh, another community. Uh, what do you mean by a prior? So when, when we say this base, she has a, she has a prior on the France winning the World Cup, or she has a prior, or and then she changed uh, uh, her prior, or uh, and then yeah. she has a posterior. So, so maybe like just like introduce this language to. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry about this. Uh, so uh, when you assume that uh, an agent is Bayesian, so uh, an agent is Bayesian if uh, he he uh, or she uh, follows the laws of probability to determine what to think. So it's like a fully probabilistic agent, like you could rename Bayesian as probabilistic. And uh, to apply the laws of probability, to know what you should think uh, after observing some data, you need to apply this equation called Bayes' rule. And to apply Bayes' rule, you need this prior. So the prior is what you would think before looking at the data. So uh, typically, initially, like the two agents uh, agreed that uh, France had a, a like a 10% probability, for instance, of winning the next World Cup, like the World Cup in 2022, uh, let's say. Uh, and uh, and then as they uh, as they get, uh, they collect more and more data. And for each piece of data, essentially, they're going to apply Bayes' rule. So Bayes' rule is going to, so it's an equation, and uh, it, it says uh, how to compute what you should believe just after you've seen the data. And so uh, this posterior distribution is like an update. It's a, a change compared to what you used to believe before looking at the data. Uh, so there's this like update rule called the Bayesian inference that's uh, going to improve your belief in a sense now that you know the data. And so you can imagine that uh, if, uh, so let's call the two agents Alice and Bob. So if Alice uh, sees uh, no data or very few data or data that are unrelated to, to football, then maybe she's not going to change her prior a lot. Like, and so after years and years of, 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 of learning about mathematics and, and school stuff, but not looking at football, she will conclude that France has a 10% probability of winning the next World Cup because that's what she used to believe. Uh, maybe on the opposite uh, side, uh, like Bob has lived a very different life. Maybe he's followed uh, football carefully or, or, or maybe not. Uh, and he's like seen data about like, uh, uh, this football player called Mbappé, and he's become very good. And so, and he sees that if Mbappé uh, is like improving uh, year after year. And so now he, given that uh, the data that he has uh, seen, he's going to change his belief, and he's going to say, well, actually, uh, uh, now I believe that uh, that uh, France has maybe a fifty percent probability of, of winning the, the next World Cup. Uh, like he doesn't really decide to change. Like it's, it's more like the laws of probabilities. By applying the laws of probabilities, he he comes to this conclusion. 
And so uh, now imagine that Alice and Bob uh, meet uh, one another again, and uh, now they are in disagreement. Uh, not because they were thinking in a bad way, but just because they were exposed to different kinds of data. And the question of, uh, of uh, Aronson, actually it's a question that uh, came back from, uh, that date back to, uh, to Alman, I think it was 1981, I'm not sure, like in the 80s, I think. Uh, 76, 76. 76, so in the 70s. Um, so our, our man asked the question like, will uh, Alice and Bob agree if they get to communicate and if they, uh, yeah, if, if they try to agree on, on the probability that France will win the next World Cup? And uh, our man's answer is yes, they can agree. Uh, and he has a very simple protocol, which is like just share all of the data. So Alice will tell everything to Bob. So also I'm assuming that the, the the two Bayesians are honest, like fully honest, and they also trust uh, each other fully. Uh, and so if they share all of the data, like Alice knows everything that Bob has seen, Bob knows everything that Alice has seen. And so uh, uh, applying the laws of probability forces both of them uh, to conclude the, to the posterior distribution once all of these data, the, the data of Bob and Alice are known. And so they reach a conclusion. So Aumann proved, and it's actually a very straightforward theorem, that two Bayesians cannot agree to disagree if they had the same prior initially. Uh, but what Aumann did not answer is what is like uh, what if they had a huge amount of data? So if you like in practice, we humans uh, collect a huge amount of data, especially if uh, after years and years and years, and uh, we cannot communicate all of these data, uh, maybe because it takes too much time. If there are like uh, two bytes to be transferred, maybe you cannot transfer this amount of data. Uh, and so Aronson's question was like, suppose you have two agents that have learned from huge amounts of data. Maybe it's like even more than terabytes. Maybe it's like uh, exabytes, zettabytes, like a huge, huge amounts of data. Uh, can they agree quickly without transferring most of, or even hardly any of this data? And the, the, like the, the, the mind-blowing answer of, of Aronson is that, yes, they can agree efficiently. In fact, uh, the amount of bits of information they need to exchange is independent from the amount of data they collected. So even if you have two agents that collected like as much data as the size of the universe, as opposed to two agents that collected like uh, 10, 10 bits of data, then the number of communication that you need to agree is going to be the same. Or it's going to be bounding in the same way. And, and this is like uh, really mind blowing. Like when I discovered this, I did not believe it. I had to read the proof to, to, to be convinced. And then I had to reread it <laughs> to understand the proof. But uh, yeah, it's uh, one of these uh, really remarkable theorems uh, in computer science. And I think it has like, like in terms of philosophy, it's like a philosophical question. Philosophical question, if you think about this, like, it's like, can we have communication? Like, is communication, can communication be made efficient to agree on things? And, that, and here you have a, a very straightforward answer, like a very compelling answer, uh, or, or with the caveats, of course, because applying base rule is, is complicated in practice. But it, it's still a strong indication that if we at least try to be Bayesian, then we can quickly agree. Yeah, maybe it deserves some more uh, explanation on uh, what what it means exactly to agree to disagree. It's something that uh, humans often do uh, during a uh, during debate. Like someone believes X, some some other debater believes uh, not X, and then they they will discuss for some time, and uh, the the outcome uh, often ends up being oh, so you believe X, I believe not X. Let's uh, agree that we disagree on the on, on that question. But for 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 Bayesian agents, uh, it, it it won't stop there. It, uh, Bayesian agent will not uh, stop at you believe X, I believe not X, and uh, and let's agree that we agree on that question, because they do uh, the thing called meta updating. If you observe that a Bayesian agent believes something different than what you believe, it will update your beliefs, uh, because uh, and. It, it's something that we can also do in, a, in, in real life with humans. If you see a human that believes something different than you, it will push you to ask questions about what you, what you actually believe. Are you correct? Is that person more correct than me? So if it's uh, my, my professor at the university 
I will most likely update my belief towards what uh, he or she thinks. But if it's uh, something that has someone that has absolutely no credential or that I don't know at all, I might uh, decide to a lot less update what I believe based on uh, based on this. Yeah. So when when two Bayesian agents interact and and know that both of them are are, are high quality Bayesian agents, then they they are forced to to update towards one another. That's why they it's it, it's not a regular according to Bayesian agents to agree that. Uh, to 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 be in a uh, agree to disagree with another Asian agent. Yeah, yeah. I th and one thing that you see that we can discuss as well is uh, the the protocol, like the the debating protocol between two uh, Asians who try to agree, uh, because it, it's like not what you would uh, recommend to uh, debate in general. Like uh, we tend to think of debate as. A, uh, something very sophisticated. You have to push uh, arguments and and, th and reasons to believe and like, for the key data. But the protocol proposed by uh, by Aronson is like uh, it's like it's it's funny how different it is from all of this. Essentially, Alice is going to say what she believes. Bob is going to listen to to Alice and say, "Oh, I I know that she believes. Now I know that she believes this." And he's going and he's going to to do the meta updating you're talking about. He's going to apply base rule to update his belief. And then he's going to say what he believes. Uh, then Alice is going to do the same thing. She's going to listen, update, and and have a, a new belief. And just she just says what she, she she believes now. And you have this back and forth where everyone is just saying what they believe. And it, it sounds like uh, a, a very bad advice for for debating. Like you don't just say what you believe. It's like, just you, but uh, the problem has been stated uh, in like in a formal enough way so that you can compute probabilities. And then you state, you state like you, you just send a sequence of bits about what the the the, the object is, and then you compute the probability in a specific number. So you just give me your belief in a precise sequence of bits, and then a precise probability computation, and then I update my yeah. But, but it is a good one because like usually we debate about about things and and sometimes uh, the debaters don't even know what they're debating about uh, anymore because like it's gone into uh, all sorts of directions and it's useful to to just like make a concrete question i like, guess uh, can we at least agree on what we're debating about and uh, choosing a probability uh, i think is a very good way to to just like remove all the 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 the, like for instance, the semantic debates or the things that are not really uh, that important or that are confusing, and just say, well, let, let's bet on what's going to happen in two years or something like this, and what 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 are the probabilities that the two of you are going to put? And I think it it can help to clarify a lot of the of the debates. Um, yeah, but then I'm not sure I would recommend to do exactly. Uh, well, I, I would. I think it's useful like to, to just like everyone says what he believes. Uh, but uh, because we humans are not uh, very good Bayesians and, and not very uh, honest and not very uh, fully trusting on one another, uh, Aronson's algorithm, uh, communication uh, protocol, uh, may not be very efficient for, for humans in practice, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe another thing I, I, I can discuss is the proof uh, of, the, of, the, uh, of the, or the fact that the two Bayesians will quickly agree in this case. So, like the, the exact proof, like it's quite technical and uh, and the paper is a bit hard to read. But the idea of the proof is actually very simple. Uh, so the the reason why this works is you can imagine um, a, a third observer, uh, like uh, Eve, for instance, who's like listening to to the debate, and all she hears is like Alice saying a number, and then Bob saying another number, and Alice saying another number, and so on. And uh, let's assume that Eve knows nothing. Like, or, or, like let's consider, uh, like, so it can be a fictitious uh, Eve, it's just for the sake of the proof. And Eve has the same prior and she has no data. And she just observes uh, the debate. Now, it turns out that there's a theorem in, in, in Bayesianism, uh, in probability theory, that says that if, um, if Alice knows strictly more than Eve, then whatever Alice says, Eve has to believe Alice. Like that, that's a very, again, it's a very weird theorem if you think about it because, like, it's uh, the argument from authority, you could say, and uh, I guess it's a version of this. Uh, it does require a few assumptions, like, for instance, 
Alice and Eve, in this case, must be Bayesian, they must be honest, and then they fully trust one another, which are like, bottlenecks in, in, practice, in practice. But you have this theorem that says that uh, from the laws of probability, if Alice has strictly more data than, than uh, Eve, and if they had the same prior, and if they know that, they know all of this, like they, they like Alice knows that, Eve knows that uh, Alice has more data than, uh, than Eve, and, and and so on, like yeah. Eve has to know that Alice knows that Eve knows and so on. Uh, and if you have all of this, then it's a theorem that uh, whatever Alice says, Eve has to believe it. And in the case of the debate between Alice and Bob, when Alice says, uh, well, I believe it's 10%, uh, Eve knows strictly less than Alice at this point, uh, because we assume that yeah, she has a strictly less data. Uh, and so Alice, uh, and, and so Eve must believe what Alice just said. So Eve must say, okay, so now I believe it's 10%. And now Bob uh, comes in and Bob says, uh, no, actually I believe it's uh, 50%, so for instance. Uh, it turns out that at this point, Eve knows strictly less than Bob. Because uh, what Eve knows is no data and all the, the, the first message that was communicated. So Eve only knows that Alice thinks initially that uh, it's ten percent, but Bob also also knows it because Bob is listening to to Alice as well. So uh, Eve knows strictly less than Bob. So now she should believe whatever Bob says. So if the debate was like Alice said ten percent and Bob say fifty uh, percent, then Eve first should believe ten percent and then fifty percent, and so on. So then if Alice says twenty uh, percent, then uh, Eve should believe twenty percent. If Bob says 40%, then uh, Eve should believe 40%, and so on. And so if you look at uh, Eve's beliefs now, they're going to, to go back and forth, they're going to, to ping pong. And uh, there's another theorem that you can prove that says that uh, a belief cannot uh, uh, oscillate too much. Uh, so like the, the sum of the, the squared of the variations of the belief, uh, must be smaller than the balance of the prior. Like you, you have the, this, this theorem that you can prove. And this shows that Eve cannot oscillate forever. Like she, she, she was well, more like the expectation of her. But anyways, uh, she cannot oscillate forever. So at some point, she has to settle somewhere. And if Eve settles somewhere, it means that because she, she, she believes whatever Alice and Bob says, it means that Alice and Bob are essentially saying the same thing. And that's how you prove that Alice and Bob will agree. Yeah, that was, was clear enough, but uh, I think it's a really cool that it's uh, also like a relatively simple proof. Uh, like I could explain it uh, more or less. Uh, and it's uh, very insightful, I think. Uh, it's very, very deep. Yeah, one point to note also about this, uh, this proof is that they, they don't talk about uh, exact agreement, like having exactly the same beliefs, because uh, this could in some situations still require an exponential amount of time, uh, referring to uh, when we talked about complexity. But they, they talk, uh, in the, the paper talk, talks about a, a slightly changed uh, definition of uh, agreement. So it considers uh, what's delta epsilon agreement, which means agreeing with a distance of epsilon. So if we, if the two Bayesian agents still disagree, they at least their disagreement is within a very small difference of beta epsilon and also the, the 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 delta in there is that the protocol for agreement is not uh, always uh, sure to succeed and there is a small delta probability that the agreement won't succeed. Yes, Amadi. Il y a un bruit de tape chez l'un de vous deux. Quoi? Il y a un truc qui tape chez l'un de vous deux. Ah, chez. Ah, c'est moi. C'est moi. Yeah, so this is like uh, epsilon delta agreement, like you want to uh, agree up to epsilon with very high probability, but this probability of agreement can be made arbitrarily high, and the uh, epsilon can be made arbitrarily uh, small. So it's, uh, it's like a near agreement, like as close as you can get to, to, to agreement without uh, being guaranteed to achieve it. Um, I don't know if you want to add more things on the paper, uh, but before wrapping up, I wanted to go uh, to uh, uh, how other communities talk about agreements because they were close to to me. Yeah. Uh, and I also think it would be uh, worth it to, to talk about uh, federated learning and uh, Byzantine resilience and the distributed system in general. 
Yeah, yeah, so maybe before going to this, we can mention another result uh, of the paper, uh, which is uh, th what happens if you have multiple agents, so Alice, Bob, Charlie, and so on. Uh, so if you have N agents, um, and they get to communicate in some way, like maybe Alice can have a talk directly to, 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 to Dave, like she has to go to football or whatever. Uh, then Aaron Hanson proved that um, in this case, you, you still you can still achieve uh, agreement, but it's going to take longer. Uh, essentially, uh, it's well, actually, I'm skipping a few details, so it's not exactly what I'm going to say, but essentially, you need uh, to have n times more uh, exchange of uh, communication rounds uh, than, uh, than for the, 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 the case where there are only two agents. And I don't know if you mentioned it, but like essentially, the when there are two agents, the number of communication rounds you need to agree up to epsilon is going to be one over epsilon squared. So if you're disagreeing about uh, the World Cup, uh, France winning the World Cup, and you say, well, okay, it's fine if you disagree up to uh, to to, to one person, for instance, then it means that the number of communication rounds that you need is roughly of the order of. Uh, uh, 100 squared, um, which is a bit more than that, but essentially it's this. Uh, so that's 10,000. And it means also that uh, it's not going to be immediate either. Like you still need to go back and forth. So uh, like, like agreement between patients still takes a, a little bit of time. Uh, and, um, and, and, and it's not immediate. However, a, uh, one thing that uh, the paper does not answer, it's uh, left as, as an open problem, is the question of whether there could be a more effective, uh, more efficient uh, communication scheme uh, than the one uh, of, uh, of Aronson. Or maybe you can even prove that Aronson's scheme, uh, I think he proved that it could not be uh, uh, better than, than something. Uh, but yeah, so, so right now there's a gap like in, in our knowledge. Like we know that to get epsilon agreement, you need to communicate at most one over epsilon squared times. But uh, we know that it's going to take at least log of one over epsilon. That's the number of uh, of decimals you want to agree up. But we don't know if the uh, yeah the, the minimal number of communication rounds to reach agreement. And, and maybe you see you can still have an exponential speed up compared to Aronson's result. We don't know. Uh, yes, Louis. So, agreement in distributed computing. Yeah. So it's interesting that the so the paper mentioned this agreement when uh, there are multiple agents and not all agents can communicate with all other agents. And this is some uh, some cases that is very useful in practice when uh, we have a distributed system uh, with uh, each part of the system making observations about the world. For example, we can think of the recommended systems in a, in today's world uh, with the social medias that they they are not uh, controlled by one central server but they are they are absolutely distributed and this uh, all these servers have to to implement some algorithms to to, to make decision in a coherent way uh, with one another so so somehow this sort of agreement problem have to be uh, have, have to be solved and uh, one thing we often discussed uh, in this uh, in this channel is also the the, the, the concept of uh, Byzantine resilience, which is when you are a distributed system and you can't trust fully all the all the parts of the system. How do you continue to to do exactly what you want to do, and you don't fail because of uh, of parts of the system that are uh, working against you? And so this is not uh, mentioned at all in the paper and. I, I expect that the solutions uh, from this paper won't uh, succeed at all uh, in, uh, in the yeah. case of, uh, of Byzantines. And in malicious, uh, malicious Bayesians, that, like, malicious and Bayesian is maybe not so. But... Well, yeah, so I think there's uh, an interesting research to be done about uh, Byzantine Bayesian uh, agreement or Byzantine Bayesian learning in general. Oh. Uh, maybe the last point is that so there is the distributed community approach to consensus and agreements, and uh, here there is like no no inference, no uh, updating of priors. It's mostly propositions, and we want to agree on a value that was proposed. So typically, the consensus 
statement is that at the end, the value that was decided is a value that was proposed. So rarely you see like there are protocols where people update what they propose, but it's mostly about having a, a quorum or a quota or like a majority uh, proposing the same thing and then reaching agreements because they propose the same thing. Now the, the, the third community that is also tackling agreement a lot uh, is the community of game theory. Uh, so social choice, uh, social choice theory, uh, aggregating preferences, voting systems. So you can think of voting systems as an approach that humanity invented to solve uh, the problem of reaching consensus and agreeing. And also this is maybe another direction where uh, the toolbox of Bayesian agreement can bring new, new interesting problems to look to work on. I don't know if Lee wants to add this or something on this. It's, it's yeah, I think yeah, there's uh, a lot uh, to uh, like. Th these are three different ways, but uh, with different uh, uh, constraints to, to 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 tackle the problem of agreement, and uh, all of them have uh, interesting features. And also, like maybe you should combine <laughs> the different features. Uh, like some ideas from one side are like should be combined because. Uh, like there's a more overarching problem, and so for instance, if you take the the, the case for for social choice, like for voting uh, in general, uh, one thing that we usually don't take into account when we're designing uh, voting uh, systems, uh, and I've done research into this, so <laughs> I know a little bit, uh, is, is that uh, we usually usually assume, for instance, that uh, the different agents know what they want, uh, and uh, if you enter, like if you combine this with more of a Bayesian approach, but the problem in, in Bayesianism is that people have a guesses about what they want or what they think about the world, let's say, uh, but they have uncertainty about this, and this uncertainty uh, can can fluctuate, can change, depending on the amounts of data that they have. So, for instance, I think uh, voting uh, with uncertainty is, a, is an interesting uh, research area. Uh, another interesting research area would be like to combine a uh, Bayesian uh, agreement with uh, or Bayesian-like agreement uh, with uh, distributed computing uh, in the presence of, of Byzantines, for instance, and uh, and uh, and this is close to machine learning, to distributed machine learning or things like federated learning, for instance. And also, also you can try to combine all three together for more fun. Okay, uh, maybe you can wrap up. And, uh, hopefully, uh, someone listening to this from either of the three communities uh, could consider working on a problem in the intersection mm -hmm. between strategy proofness in game theory or Byzantine fault tolerance and distributed computing and, of course, Bayesian agreement. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Then I think I'll see you next week. See you. Bye. Uh, stop.